Comedy should provoke. It should blast through prejudices, challenge preconceptions. Comedy should always leave you different than when it found you. Sure, humor can hurt, even alienate. But the risk is better than the alternative. A steady diet of innocuous, childproof, flavorless mush. Demand to be challenged, to be offended, to be treated like thinking, reasoning adults. And raise your children to be the same. Don't let a comedian, a network, a congressional committee, or an evil genius take away your freedom to laugh at whatever you want. When we speak about fictional ducks, a few notable names come to mind, mostly Donald and Daffy, both of whom have been extremely successful and influential in the animation industry. Today's subject, despite being the lesser appreciated of what I'm now dubbing the animated duck trifecta, has also had a profound impact and influence that's still being felt today. So let's take a look at the cult classic 1994-1997 animated series, Duckman. Coffee! Uranus! Where the f*** is my coffee? Don't you little hoes realize I want my coffee first thing every m***? Morning. And if I don't get it now, I'm gonna kick your furry little asses out of here! So give me that coffee! Oh. <laughs> Guess you'll cut that. Uh, look, now that you're here, I want you people to know I'm just a little bit tweaked that it took you so long to get to me. I mean, I should have been the first show, not the hundredth. <laughs> not that it's changed my opinion of your fine program one iota. I'm proud to be part of your uncompromising quest for truth and justice. Eric Tiberius Duckman is a crass, womanizing, chain-smoking, loudmouth private dick who has three kids among two bodies, a bitchy sister-in-law whose mother communicates solely through flatulence, a pair of adorable yet immortal stuffed animal assistants, and a Joe Friday sound-alike pig for a partner. Sometimes after an electrical storm I see in five dimensions. Why are the 60 of you looking at me like that? He's the brainchild of artist Everett Peck, who while working freelance with Klasky Chupo on other projects, pitched the series based on his original illustration inspired by a mix of encounters from his everyday life. As far as my inspiration for it, it was just sort of a, an eclectic mix. Like I say, Duckman sort of happened in one drawing and Corn Fed too, but some of it's based on uh, 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 people I, I know or just experiences I've had. Um, actually, the working relationship between Duckman and Corn Fed were based on uh, a friend of mine and his partner. and. Uh, and uh, their kind of dysfunctional relationship in a business. So that was kind of a, the inspiration for that aspect of it. But I also wanted them to have a family. So that draws on, you know, a lot of you know, friends or things I would see. And I would just sort of make a little note or a little sketch. And it just sort of happened organically like that. The idea was greenlit, production began, and an amazing voice cast was onboarded. And I mean amazing. The show kind of plays like a mix between a dysfunctional family sitcom and a film noir style detective setting where Duckman and his family go on wacky adventures like the family getting locked in the basement, investigating a murder, going on the run to avoid paying taxes, helping Corn Fed lose his virginity, saving the president, overthrowing a small South American country, or ripping open a hole in the time-space continuum, just to name a few. Taking place in a universe where the anthropomorphic characters often feel more human than the human characters, Duckman has a surprising amount of heart. I mean, sure, he's a crass jerk most of the time, but there's an occasional glimmer of a decent human being, er, duck man, sprinkled throughout the series. Son, Dodd. Wow, for a moment we were just like one of those ideal families in those sappy situation comedies. <laughs> yeah, the kind where they learn something from each other every week and then the music swells and they... <laughs> and that was an important part of the Duckman character. Generally, like he's, you know, over the top and ridiculous and all of that. But then he does have moments uh, where he sort of, you know, comes down and you, you kind of, you know, get on his side. You see he has like another side to himself. The supporting characters are also very well written, my favorites being Duckman's seemingly dull but often insightful son Ajax, his nemesis King Chicken voiced by the legendary Tim Curry, his straight shooting partner Cornfed, and of course, Grandmama. <coughs> I 
At the time of its original broadcast, animation aimed solely at adults on television wasn't really a thing. Well, it existed, but Duckman pushed the envelope quite a bit further than MTV or Fox at the time with a mix between vulgar comedy, adult themes, and a healthy dose of sexuality. So you'd think they'd be fighting the censors tooth and nail, but actually Everett and the team were never really given much hassle. They didn't really give us much in the way of notes. I mean, they, they, uh, they just more or less let us kind of do whatever we wanted to do, which was ideal, right? Um, once in a while, Paramount would give a note or two, but not, there was not too much interference in, in terms of censorship. Duckman is seen as a cult classic which was ahead of its time before it was sadly cancelled after 70 glorious episodes spanning four seasons and a point-and-click adventure game on Windows. Over 20 years later, Duckman still enjoys a cult following, and at the time of this video's upload, there's a recent DVD release of the entire series, so check it out for yourself. It's possible we may see some kind of Duckman revival in the future. The current climate and trends in adult animation are perfect for a series like Duckman, even more so than when it was originally broadcast, and Everett seems keen on the idea. I think we had plenty of more things to say and do with the character. I didn't feel like at the end of fourth season we were exhausted or anything. I, I felt there was a lot more uh, potential ideas that we could have uh, pushed through those characters. For now, however, we can all at least put our downs down as we look back fondly at this somewhat obscure piece of animation history and thrust our pelvises and rejoice at the boundaries it was able to push, which opened doors for many of the adult animated series we see on television now. You can still see a lot of what Duckman pioneered in current animation. In some cases, arguments could be made that many of this era's popular shows draw direct influences to this very day. What the hell are you staring at? My name is Fade Dragon Tear, and those are my thoughts. What are yours? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Oh, let's go get up and get down by doing the funky duck man. You let you down, down. You thrust your pelvis, huh? 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 You thrust your pelvis, huh?